In this video, we'll go over how to asynchronously load a 3D model using Apple's Reality Kit and Combine frameworks. Before we can place a 3D model in our space, there are three important things we need to do. First, we need to store our 3D model in a supported format. Reality Kit can load USD files and Reality files. In a previous video, we added our 3D models as USDZ files to our project. In this case, our assets are stored on disk. In a future video, we'll explore how to store assets in the cloud. Second, we can retrieve a model entity from storage on disk using synchronous or asynchronous load operations. If you are new to programming, synchronous and asynchronous operations may be new concepts for you. I strongly encourage you to Google these terms to learn more. When using the synchronous load method, all operations on a thread will have to wait until the loading has completed. This can be very disruptive, especially if we use the synchronous method on a thread that runs our user interface operations. As a challenge to you, try to think why it would be a bad idea to run synchronous operations on the UI thread. Leave a comment below with your answer. For this project, we will use the asynchronous method to load our model entity. For the third and final step, we add our model entity to an anchor entity and place the anchor entity in our AR view scene. This third step will be covered in a follow-up video. Before we get started, this is the hardware and software used in this video. If you're using anything older or newer, you might have to make some adjustments to your code. Now let's get started. Navigate to the model.swift file. Inside the model class, right under the init method, there should be a to-do comment to create a method to asynchronously load the model entity. Remove this comment. Create a new function called async load model entity. The function will not have any parameters and the return type is void. Create a constant called file name and assign it the value of the name property combined with the string literal .usdz. In Swift, we can combine two strings using the concatenation operator, which is in this case the plus symbol. Next, we will use the load model async method in the model entity class. Before writing any code, let's study this method. Load model async takes in a file name and optionally a bundle. Since our assets are stored in the app's main bundle, we can leave the bundle at default nil. The return type of load model async is a load request. This is known as a resource loader that publishes the root entity in the loaded file as a model entity. If this sounds all foreign to you, no worries. We'll explore how this works together. A resource loader is really a publisher. A publisher can transmit values or objects to one or more subscriber instances. So the load model async method looks for a file, gets the model entity if it exists, and publishes the model entity using a load request. At this point, you might be wondering how to subscribe to this publisher to receive the model entity. That is what the remainder of this video is about. The combined framework provides a convenient built-in method to create a subscriber to receive elements from a publisher. This method is called sync and takes two closures. The first closure executes when the publisher has finished. In this closure, we can respond to success and failure events. The second closure executes when it receives a model entity from the publisher. Let's see how all of this works in code. We will call the load model async method and pass in our file name. This line of code creates a publisher. To create a subscriber, we will use the sync method. As mentioned before, in the first closure, we'll handle the finished and failure events. We can assign the load completion status to a load completion constant. Using a switch statement, we can respond to the load completion status. When there is a failure, assign the error to an error constant and print out a message to the console. The message will be unable to load model entity for file name, error, and then the description of the error. When the load completion status is finished, meaning no error has occurred in loading the model, we simply just break out of the switch statement. In the second closure, we will receive and process our model entity. We can assign the received element to a constant named model entity. Next, we'll assign the received model entity to our model entity property of the model class. We will also apply our scale compensation to the model entity to ensure it has the appropriate real world scale. Finally, we can print a statement saying model entity for name has been loaded. We're almost done. I will now cover something very important, so pay close attention. Notice how Xcode is giving us a warning for sync. The warning states result of call to sync is unused. 
or code as is will not work properly. When looking at the documentation for sync, we see that an object of type any cancelable is returned. Anytime you connect a subscriber to a combined publisher, an any cancelable object is returned. It is important to retain this object in a variable, otherwise it will be cleaned up by memory management. More specifically, if we don't store the result of our sync method, there will be zero references to the object, and thus it will be deallocated. When a subscriber is deallocated from memory, it will cancel the subscription, thus also canceling the model load request before it is completed. So to make sure we retain the result for our sync method, we will create a private variable called cancelable and give it an optional any cancelable type. In our async load model entity function, we will assign the result of sync to our self.cancelable property. We can now see that the warning is no longer there. Before we can test our load method, let's make sure we call our method. Navigate to the browse view file. In our item button action closure, Remove the to-do comment that states to call our async load method. Call our async load method by doing model.asyncload model entity. Let's run the app. When opening the browse view and tapping on, for example, the teapot model, we can see in the console model entity for teapot has been loaded. And that's it for this video.